from time immemorial, not only have real estate investors and buyers had to deal with Omonile or land grabbers Wahala. They've also had to deal with fraudulent real estate companies and evil people that pose as real estate agents. In this video, I'll be telling you eight ways in which you can spark, spot a fake real estate agent. My name is Abiola Fadansi. I'm the lead consultant at J2 Homes Investment Limited. I help real estate investors locate genuine properties at the right place, price and terms, so that they can make maximum return on their investment within the shortest time possible. So welcome to Easy Real Estate with Abiola, where I educate you on real estate do and don't, so you don't lose your hard-earned money or even lose your life. If you are watching this on YouTube, do well to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any educative video I'll share. And if you are watching on Facebook and Instagram, do well to like and share this video with your family and friends. Okay, and in the course of this video, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay, if you have any question, please use the comment box. I'll definitely respond to your questions. I would answer all of them, leaving none out. So let's get right into why we are here. How do you spot a fake real estate agent? So a real estate agent or broker or realtor, because in this part of the world, those terms have been used interchangeably. So I'm just going to define define um, define who an agent is using all of those terms together as well. So a real estate agent, broker or realtor is a licensed professional that facilitates a real estate transaction. They have the responsibility of bringing the seller and the buyer together and they get paid a percentage of the sales price as commission. Okay, so how do you spot a fake real estate agent? Number one, is that he or she is not licensed or registered with any real estate company or brokerage firm. And this is um, because in Nigeria, really the real estate industry is not, is not so structured, such that even though there are rules, the rules are not, they are not like, we, we can't feel the rules, so to say, okay? Because anybody can wake up at any time and say, I am a real estate agent, I am a realtor, I am a broker. Even Kamoru, that was a carpenter yesterday, can say, I'm tired of cutting wood. I just, I, I know, I, I think I'll make money if I sell houses. And he wakes up the next day and, and he says he's now an agent. So there are no rules, there are no, so entering into the industry as an agent, there's no, there's really no limitation per se. Anybody, anywhere now, it's not even a matter of whether you're educated or not. Like that, that's not, even the, that's not even the issue. Anybody can pose as an agent or as a realtor, but then how do you spot a fake one? When he or she cannot tell you a particular company or a brokerage firm that they are registered with, okay? You ask questions, they can't give you, they can't give you just, they can't, they have nothing to prove that this is what I do. Like I've been thoroughly schooled, I know what it entails, I can put, put you through this process and make sure you're making an informed decision or even showing you the right deals in the market. So that's one of the ways. They are not registered or licensed with any real estate company or any brokerage firm. So that is one of the ways to support a fake real estate agent. Then number two is he or she ask you to pay into a bank account details that is not bearing the name of the seller. Like I hear this a lot. You want to buy a property and you're asked to pay into the bank account of someone that is not the seller. And when I mean the seller, it can be um, an individual, it can be a real estate company, it can be, um, it can be a family owned property. And this, um, this person, this agent has no power of attorney to show to that effect. And a power of attorney is simply a legal document um, um, showing that um, a person has been assigned to carry out a particular duty on behalf of someone else. So he or she is asking you to pay into an account that doesn't carry the name of the seller and the seller hasn't authorized you to pay into that particular account. That is a red flag you really want to look out for. That's a red flag. Thank you. Thank you, Keshro Babatunde. Thank you. That's one red flag you really should look out for when you're being asked to pay into an account or even the personal account of the realtor, of the agent. So, for example, you want to buy a property from a company. Let me use, okay, Gracious Company as an example. And in fact, these days, when you want to buy from a real estate company and you go, go through their forms and FAQ, you will see it there because they are frequently asked questions where you will see um, a question such as, can I pay through your agent or can I pay 
into your realtor's account and they'll tell you even though we are not discrediting any of our agents or any of our realtors we will strictly advise you pay into the company's account like the second part notifies everything right like why would you even want to pay into a realtor's account when you are buying from a company okay when the company have not said it outrightly that okay go ahead to pay and more you really would even find a company or an individual tell you pay through my agent or pay through my um, um pay through a router or something and even if that's the case you really need to ask why so if there's a power of attorney to that effect you really need to ask why am i not paying to you directly it's your name that is on this property why am i not sending the money into the account that carries the same name okay so that's another red flag then number three is they can't present the title document of the property they are marketing to you. So, an agent is telling you have a property for sale, it has a COO, and you're asking him that you want to see the, um, the COO document, and he can't show it to you. It's one excuse from one excuse to the other. If today the seller's wife is not in labor, and I'm telling you this because I've dealt with this myself, even as an expert, I've dealt with it. You, uh, my client wants to buy a property, I'm dealing with another agent, I'm dealing with the so-called seller's agent. Okay, provide the property, um, the document, and it's excuse, different excuses you keep getting. If the um, seller did not slump on Monday, is his wife that will be in labor on Tuesday. Or on Wednesday, he forgot the, the number to the safe where he kept the document. They will just give you all sorts of stories just not to present a document for you to see and verify. So when all of those excuses start coming up, that's a red flag. You need to know there's something wrong here. Something is just not right. So they can't pro provide the document, the title document to the property they're trying to market to you. You really should move away from that kind of deal very fast, as fast as you can. Then number four, they do not answer your questions in a clear manner. As in, they act very shifty. They don't answer your questions in a clear manner. And in most cases, they even leave you more confused than you originally were. So you ask them questions. They just keep confusing your brain. They can't answer you. You know, if you're working with an agent or if you're working with a realtor or broker or whatever it is, is marketing a property to you and you're asking him questions, the normal thing is for you to be clear. So on areas where you're not clear, you should be able to clarify things for you and you should have, um, you should be clear. You should understand perfectly what he's trying to tell you. But you ask this person questions and it leaves you more confused than you originally were. That's another, another red flag. It shows one is that the person doesn't know what he or she's doing. Okay, or it's just, it's just outright fake. It's a fake person. And I, I will share my own personal experience with you. So it is not even just for um, investors alone or people trying to buy. So if you can imagine me with all my knowledge in the real estate industry, someone, people still try to, conf they can't confuse me anyway because I know, I, I know what I'm doing. So there was this property I was supposed to see. A client called me to go inspect a property on his behalf somewhere in Aja. So I was already on the way to go see this property. And I just thought, okay, let me call this lady. I got the agent's number. Let me call her and ask. Because even before going to see some property, um, a property, there are some questions that you would ask that you would know whether the, even going for inspection is worth it or not. So you don't even waste your time. So I called her. I was like, I'm on my way. But before I get there, please, I would need to, when I get there, make sure you have the building approval and all of that. Make sure it's available for me to see. And she said, um, building approval that he doesn't have a building approval and i was like and this is a completed house so he wants to buy a completed house i was supposed to go inspect on his behalf and i was asking for the documents the papers the building approval and she goes he doesn't have a building approval and i, I was like how will how will a completed house not have a building approval and she was like hey are you new here that was the first thing she told me <laughs> she said are you new here you don't know all this part of agile all this that was towards somewhere around at the road or something all this part of Aja, all the buildings here, they don't have building approval. What we do, the normal thing is that after you build and the um, and the property is sold, the buyer gets to go and apply for the building approval in Alausa. And I was like, what nonsense is, is this woman telling me? I was thinking that in my head. And you know, the, the, the surprising thing is she was speaking with so much confidence. And I was like, no. You can't tell me. She said, no, uh, are you new? Are you new? Are you a new agent? That's what she was telling me. Are you new? Are you new? All the properties here, they don't have building approval. It's when the buyer, buyer gets it, to go get, uh, apply for building approval. And so so I, I asked her, I was like, what happens if the building approval is not approved? She said, no, there's no way they won't approve it. In fact, it's cheaper. When you apply for building approval, after you've built, 
than when you apply before you build. And in as much as I was angry, I was pissed off. I knew that was a total waste of my time. I, I started laughing. And she was wondering what was making me laugh. I just, I ended the call and I just called my client and told him, there's no point going to see this property. It has no building approval. And I explained why and the implications to him. But imagine if I was not knowledgeable. Imagine if I was, um, okay, okay, I myself, I'm half-baked. I don't know all these terms. I don't know the right thing to do. I would, one or two things would have happened. is either I am confused, I become confused, right? Or I accept all what she has told new client and sinker. I go ahead to inspect the property on behalf of the client and he buys it. And at the end of the day, he faces the consequence of either having his building demolished by the government, okay, or having to pay an outrageous fee just to get that building approval. Because what was supposed to be done before the building was built at an amount, at a particular amount, now the government, okay, don't let me say the government. They won't take advantage of the fact that you've built, and because you have no choice, you won't want your building demolished. So if they charge you a very outrageous amount to pay, you have no choice. You would want to pay. The only thing you can start doing is you 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 start begging, and you really don't want to be in that situation. But what baffled me was the confidence in which she spoke to me. That I, she was even telling me, "Am I new? You don't know." Beauty. As she was, she was saying nonsense and she was so confident while at it she was saying rubbish she was so confident while at it so if i was not knowledgeable myself she would have either left me confused okay or i would have accepted the rubbish she was telling me and i would have gone ahead with the deal so anytime you speak to an agent and they leave you confused more than you have been before just know it's, it's not worth your time okay and they can't clarify you ask questions you keep asking they keep leaving you confused that's a red flag, okay? So number five is you can't give, you, okay, they can't give you a detailed account of the payment plan. They keep asking for some uns, unforeseen costs. So a good real estate agent or realtor or broker should be able to tell you all the cost, everything it entails from the beginning, in, including when you're buying, including when you're buying, um, a family land or you're buying from a money lens even though you can't really predict a money lens but they are still predictable to an extent so you know that okay if you're dealing with a money lens, you have to deal with all the foundation fee roofing fee and i said in one of my previous video that there's still a way to go about it where you can have an agreement with these guys from the beginning that you can in a way save yourself from all of that you may still pay but because there's an agreement has been signed you've taken the power off them from the beginning they don't come with just all uh, all sort of outrageous fees for you to pay as you go on in that transaction okay so when you have an agent that is not telling you everything that it entails for you to pay that is a red flag so you pay for the cost of land and they come tomorrow they tell you they want to put cement in front of the property you have to pay for that one they want to do a fountain you have to pay for this they want to do something just come up with all sorts of things and you keep paying that's a red flag okay and even when you buy from when you buy from real estate companies like there are statutory fees you will pay a good agent or a realtor or broker should inform you before you even pay any amount at all. So I've seen some, I've seen some agents, what they do is they tell the clients that, okay, the cost of land, let's say, for example, the cost of land is seven million. And you as the agent knows there are other fees to be paid, such as developmental fee, um, documentation fee, um, um, money for your data of assignment and your survey. And they don't mention any of that. They just tell you cost of land just because they're trying to make a sale, just because they're trying to get their commission. Then eventually you are shocked you are, you to find out, oh, there's something called developmental fee to pay. There's something called your documentation fee you have to pay. Meanwhile, those are not bad. They are, they are the right things to do. When you buy land, especially from um, a real estate company, there are other stat statutory charges and it is not the company ripping you off. Maybe in another video, I would explain all of that. I will explain what the, all what the statutory charges mean. But the right thing is for you to know ahead of time. So if you know cost of land is 7 million, if the developmental fee is 1 million, you know ahead of time. So you know how to plan yourself. So if they keep coming up with unforeseen costs for you to pay, that is a red flag. A good realtor or a good agent will let you know ahead of time everything that is involved in the transaction that you need to com commit to. So they are not pulling up surprises at, at, at you at one level or another. That even gets you frustrated. Okay, then number six is when you request 
to be taken to sites they ask you to pay a commitment fee first to show you to show you um to sh to show you are serious okay so when you are asked to pay a commitment fee first that is another red flag and now i'm not even talking about inspection fee so in my home company we don't charge for inspection inspection is free wherever we are taking you to is free but that doesn't mean that if another company or another agent choose to charge for inspection fee it doesn't mean they are wrong okay it doesn't mean they are wrong but now so now i'm not talking about the charges for inspection fee for from our company it's absolutely free but i'm talking about when you want to buy a property and they are telling you okay let's say the property is seven million again and they're telling you pay 20 percent first before i take you to sites so that i can see how serious you are that is a red flag you should always see your property before you even pay any amount and like i said again it is not is asking you to pay for a commitment is different from asking you to pay for inspection we do free inspections but some people can charge you and it's fine it's not wrong it's is how they choose to run their business and is how we choose to run ours, okay? But when you're asked to pay, okay, pay 20% of the property sum before you sell the property, that is a red flag. You really should move away from that deal quickly because if there's not nothing fishy about the property, you shouldn't be asked to pay, you shouldn't be asked to pay um, a commitment fee before you are shown the site. Or, again, you get to the site and they show you a marked property. I've seen this happen, like, right in front of me. They show you a marked property. Maybe the government, Labour State government or any government has marked the property for maybe for um, demolition or something. But because you don't know the meaning of the marking, they tell you, or they, they just simply tell you it means nothing. Okay, that is another red flag. That is another red flag. You really want to run away from that kind of deal. Either they are telling you, you or you see red flags on the property and they're telling you, no, it's nothing. They are wavering it off. They are waving it off and not taking time to explain to you or make you um, understand what's happening or they are telling you pay a commitment fee before they show you the property just because they want to know whether you are serious or not. See, when they tell you, let them know you are, you are even not serious. You really should move away from that kind of deal and get somewhere else to buy. Okay, so when, um, number seven is when they, when they make sure you know little information about them, right? A real route or a real agent that is not fake will make sure you have as much information as possible about them, about what they do. So when you are dealing with an agent and the person is sure you have, like, you don't even, in fact, maybe the only thing you know about the person is the name. It's the person's name. And the person's name might even be fake. They don't carry an ID card. You can't see any ID card. There's no proof. You search them online. They are nowhere to be found. Right? That is another red flag. So for someone like me now, by the time you even type my name online, you see everything all about me, all about the work I do. You see the articles I've written, you see the videos I've done, you see probably the site inspection videos I've shot, you see, you see everything, you see my office address, you see everything there online. So there's nothing fishy, there's nothing hidden. But when you're working with, with a realtor, you know, you, don't, you barely know anything about him or her, then that is a red flag, okay? So you should always ask questions. You should ask questions, what have they done before? Where do they work? Who have they worked with? If possible, get numbers of those they've worked with and ask questions so you can know the person you're dealing with, okay? So when they start making sure you get little, very little information about them, that is another red flag. Then number eight, I made this number eight because I feel this one, it's, I don't want to say it's rare, but I feel for anyone to do this, like as a buyer to do this, maybe you've been bewitched. <laughs> that's the way i say it because number eight is they make sure you sign a non-disclosure doc agreement that stops you from speaking to anyone you know about the deal like i've already happened or i don't know anyone that it has personally happened to but i've already happened that there are some times that as a buyer you meet with an agent and they tell you sign a non-disclosure agreement about the deal like you can't tell anyone you know about it like why would you even sign that kind of agreement so that is why i'm saying that i don't think anyone in their right frame of mind will go into that kind of transaction where you would have to sign a non-disclosure agreement about the deal okay so that's why i put that number eight but that's also a red flag or maybe you start talking to them and they are telling you oh this agree this deal you can't really say much to anybody if you can't if you won't say much how do you want to verify how do you want to chat the property how do you want to ask questions when you can't tell anyone about it Okay, that is also a red flag. All right, and those are the eight, um, eight things, eight ways you can spot a fake real estate agent. I hope I've been, I, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's clear. 
I don't know if there's any question for those watching live. Okay, no question yet. But like I said, if you're watching the live, if you're watching live or you're watching the replay and you have any question, please drop them. I will respond to them. If you're watching the replay, I would respond to your questions. Just drop them in the comment section. So that is it basically. They are not registered with a real estate company or brokerage firm they tell you to pay into their personal account or an account that is not for the seller they can't give you clear information they leave you confused every time you ask them question they can't um they don't tell you every amount you need to pay up front they are eating they keep telling you they keep coming up with all form of things for you to pay for you can't you know little or no information about them you can't even verify them you don't know where they work you don't know how they work they can't provide documents to the um, property they are marketing to you those are serious red flags. So what is my advice? My advice is that when you meet a realtor, verify them, ask questions, do your due diligence. You don't only do due diligence on the property, on the property you are buying. You also do due diligence on your realtor, on your agent, on whoever, on the broker, whatever it's called, you call it, that you're working with. Find out what they've done, who have they worked with, who, uh, who, are, who are those they've helped in time past, okay? And also go see the property, go and see the property and also see the papers, okay? And make sure that it is what you are being shown is as, is as advertised. And what I mean is, it is what you order that you're getting. So it's not a different thing you're saying online and a different thing that they are showing you. And also, you need to go the extra mile to verify this document at the, at the legitimate places, okay? So if you're trying to check for survey, you go to the right place. For Lagos, is the survey general's office. You're not using people that are not credible to do your search because that's another thing. You find people that are not knowledgeable enough or, or they're not credible and they tell you lies instead of telling you the truth. So you have to make sure you do all of that. So that is my advice. And yeah, that is it today on Easy Real Estate with Abiola. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Damilola. Thank you, Keshin Ruba Batsunde. Thank you, everyone. I can't say everyone now, but thanks for watching. And if you are yet to download my real estate buyer's guide on five things to look out for before investing in real estate in Lagos, do so now do so while it's still available for free download like you you'd 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 learn more in that book and i'm sure you'll thank me for it after you download and you read it okay so since there are no questions that's all today on easy real estate with abiola till i see you again next time it's bye for now and don't forget if you're watching the replay and you have any question please ask your questions i'll respond to them so bye bye